The Koi Gig Pod on OTB Sports in association with Cadbury. A player and a half deserves a glass and a half of support. Top pocket goal! It's what dreams are made of. They are going to the World Cup Finals! Hello and welcome to episode 70 of the Koi Gig Podcast. I'm Kathleen McNamee and I am joined, as ever, by former Ireland internationals Emma Byrne and Captain Karen Duggan. And we also have a very special guest in from the top of the show with our beloved Emma Carroll joining us from the start because... We have a very exciting guest. To mark our 70th episode, we had a very great chat with Manchester United. She's taught us how to say her name, and I'm still going to butcher it, but Ona Badier? Badier. I mean, Emma has been telling us something different all season, so I feel like we'll we'll catch up by the start of next season, hopefully, (laughs) anyways. Ona has it wrong. (laughs) <laughs> has her own name wrong yeah i'm gonna correct <laughs> her later <laughs> um yeah so do stay tuned for that chat because it is a good one and also i mean what better time to get her right after manchester united beat city losing out on champions league in the process and it gives united a chance albeit a slim one to beat chelsea in the final weekend so we got her thoughts on all of that and plenty of more um but for now we are just going to have a bit of a general chit chat about the wsl the news of course that the aviva is going to be used for an irish women's game and uh, that's going to be the U- nations league one against northern ireland later in I think, september 23rd yeah there you go get my dates right um and then of course emma's team of the week the second last one of the season which is very sad uh, the Koi Gig Podcast on OTB Sports is sponsored by Cabri FC, official snack partner to the Republic of Ireland women's national team. Might as well start with the news about the Aviva. What are people's thoughts, opinions on the fact that a game will finally be held in the Aviva? I know you've both been very pro Tala, so. I was pro Tala for the qualifiers because I didn't want anything to like add to the pressure that was already on the girls, but I think for the Nations League um, and off the back of the hype of the World Cup and all the promotion that that will bring to the team. I think it's the perfect time to pilot it and see how it goes, um, particularly against Northern Ireland. You'll get maybe a crowd down from Northern Ireland. Um, and it's also a game we'd expect to win, which again will bring more positivity around the team. So I think it's it's at the right time, in my opinion. So I'm really looking forward to it, actually. Yeah, it, it, that's it. It's all about time and, and it is the right time. If you'd have asked me last year, I would have said no. Mm. Because I, I want to fill out uh, Tallis Stadium first. Um, we've we've done that pretty much. And it's it's as well with the WSL, like we're very strongly linked to the WSL in Ireland. A lot of people would watch it in Ireland. They're filling out their stadium, Stamford Bridge, uh, the Emirates. So it's it's just time. And uh, yeah, I think it's a really great idea. And it would be great a great way to gauge um, exactly how many people are going to support the girls. Yeah, that's been the general reaction. I put it out to our listeners when the news broke just before we started recording. And a lot of positivity around it. Uh, C says, Saturday afternoon, post-World Cup, easy sell. Price it right, be ambitious with target crowd numbers. And then Derek Doyle said, totally agree, re-ambition. If ladies football's final stay in Croke Park can pull in 40k plus fans, no reason why the Aviva can't be full for this. So I love the ambition that's already coming in from our listeners. They're like, yeah, you're going to get the whole thing full and there's not going to be a question about it, which anyway, it's good out to have. And also, as someone pointed out there, it's post-World Cup. So it is going to be a good time to catch those people. Um, Emma, Carol, welcome to the earlier part of the show. How how does it feel to be <laughs> in Thanks for having beginning? me. <laughs> Strange. Yeah. Just sitting here kind of, go, oh, yeah, there, there they are talking now. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, you're just there listening to us ramble on about stupid things. So at least maybe you can bring a bit of intelligence to the conversation and help us all along. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, How did you find watching the games this weekend? Lots of excitement, especially with your beloved Liverpool, who had a six goal thriller of a game. Yeah, three all. Wow. Um, yeah, good weekend of football. Lots of drama and brings us up nicely for the last day of the season next week as well. So, Mm. 
Same. And we saw a few Irish heads reappearing, one being Leanne Kiernan. Eva Mannion was mysteriously not playing, and I've yet to see if she, she wasn't even in the squad. She was pictured in a knee brace, so I'd be expecting the worst there. Mm. Oh, that's definitely something news. serious. Mm. You just put a little dampener on my mood. I was like, I haven't seen anything. <laughs> well, I was new to the United game, so I just spotted it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair. I'm going to be positive because I think if it was something bad, they would have released some. Yeah. Kind of yeah. I'm just going to say it's a little bit of support. She's feeling the knee and she'll be back in a couple caution. Of I mean, sure, Katie was in a leg brace as well, and she was fine after like a week. So, it was just nice. yeah, fine after like two days. <laughs> they're just trying to psych out Australia already this far out. That's exactly what they're at. Um, but yeah, Emma Leanne Kiernan got her first few minutes. What were your impressions of her? Obviously, it's been eight months since we last saw her play. It's been that long. I thought she was very bright when she came on. I thought good movement, good to see, good half an hour as well to come back with. So. Hopefully she can do something now next Saturday and maybe score a winner against United or something. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> Not to put anyone. If her into the Ireland squad, I'd nearly take it, but <laughs> nearly, <laughs> nearly. You sounded so bitter about that. <laughs> no, I know. I love Leanne. I'd love to see her in the the squad brought to Australia because I do think we need more firepower and um, more options in those areas. So. It'd be great if she was deemed fit enough to go. Um, but also great to see Fahey back, particularly if Mannion is potentially an injury worry. Um, just the leadership qualities that Neve always brings is second to none. Well, yeah, it was kind of a mixed weekend for the Irish guard over in the WSL. See Katie missing a penalty, another uh, penalty as well. Us. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, Emma, Carol and I were talking about this today and we were like, that's been quite a few over the last couple of seasons that she has missed. Is it, do you think there's maybe some haunting of Ukraine still in her head or, because like, there's not a lot of power behind the penalties that she does take. Take her off them. Yeah, I actually, I, I, to be honest, I think after this one, it's, there's plenty of players who can definitely take penalties. What about in an <laughs> Irish context? She can I'd still have her on them in, uh, for Ireland. Yeah, I think she's the most penalties. Starter. She's trying to place them. They're just mistakes. Like she probably, knowing Katie, she doesn't really practice them enough. Like it's a, it's quite a natural thing, but you do have to practice them a little bit just to get your confidence. She dragged it. There's yeah. a lot of pressure on her. Um, she she'll be fine. She she needs to get them out of the system now. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she'll be great. Um, <laughs> well as we mentioned Emma is here because she has a lovely team of the week which sadly doesn't feature any Irish talent but we still have one more week to go so Emma do you want to run through your team of the week and we will also have a little bit of discussion around some of the games as well um, as we go through the team yep so we've got Berger in goal and then a back four with Hines, Eriksson, Letizia and Battier <laughs> Battier? <laughs> I don't know. We don't know anymore. Battier. Battier. <laughs> right and Cupboard and Hansen in the middle and then Stengel, England and Garcia up front. Very nice, very nice. Karen, you're making a face and I don't know if it's approval or disapproval, but... <laughs> I'm just having a think. Um, obviously, Ona goes in because she goes in every week that we possibly can put her in. Um, Garcia, I guess big moments win games, so you'll allow her in there. Just on the United front, I thought it was Nikita Paris's best game for United. I was surprised she was taken off as early as she was. I thought that she was definitely better than Toon and who was taken off at the same time. And also Russo wasn't exactly firing on all cylinders. So she was up for a shout, but I suppose Hansen in Villa, like she was probably the one that kind of set the tone for, for them and that was a cracker of a game. I don't think Villa expected to go down in the way they did, but I know they did say that they had some illness and injuries and stuff during the week. But um, yeah, it was, it was a, a cracker, unexpected cracker, I think, Liverpool and Villa. No little John on in the squad either, so she must have picked up another knock by the looks of it, probably. Oh, God, that doesn't, that doesn't sound very good at all. <clears throat> 
Um, no, it's I have very little to say about this team. Only well done, Emma. I I, I might have put <laughs> Haley Ladd in, but just because yeah. we oh. never. And never, we'll have her never have her in there. Yeah. <laughs> and that left footed swing to the top corner. Come on. And, and just her little face when she scored. <laughs> so shocked. <laughs> she must have been smiling for like 10 minutes after that. So maybe I would have just chucked her in there. Um, uh, possibly. I thought Chloe Kelly was really good for City, considering they were down to, to 10. I thought she kept going and created some chances that maybe on another day Shaw would have took was good as well. away um, but I thought yeah City were really good in that second half and only for that Letizia tackle on Shaw at the end it would have been a very different story um, so that was massive and yeah she deserves to be in there beside Ericsson for that reason definitely Any doubts around the room about the Robux ending off? I don't think it was a red card personally I think the, ta- the defender was back I think Leilu Habi would have got back there. And not just that, you have to take the touch into account. Nikita Paris' touch was gone very wide. Mm-hmm. And by the time she got on it, Leilu would have been definitely in the line of the goal. Um, I think uh, for initially I was like, he sent her off because it was a studs up because there's it's not a red card. And then when I looked again, it wasn't. I think the ref actually, she, she actually thought that it was, you know, last defender and, nearly better off having it in the box so she doesn't get sent off gives away a penalty but uh yeah a bit of a rush of blood to the head I don't think she needed to come out she kind of hesitated and yeah caused herself some trouble there I, um, I think it kind of sums up Ellie Roebuck's season unfortunately I I love Ellie I think she's a great keeper but I think she needs something different whether it's more confidence from the coach or whatever it is um, because she's a great goalkeeper, she's up there with Mary Earps for sure. But yeah, and so that, what do you think of Earps? Was, was it her positioning for the cross that went over her head? What was your it, opinion on it? It's Mary's weaknesses in the air. Her weaknesses in the air, that's where it is. I think she's done excellently considering she's not very good in the air. Mm. I think she's gotten away with it and she's done some amazing things. If you were to look at Mary as a goalkeeper and you didn't know her, you wouldn't know what her weakness is because she hides it very well. The weakness is in the air. She doesn't uh, judge it correctly. I don't think her confidence is there as it was in um, in last summer. Uh, and I think that's where I would go in the air and I'd get players in there. Uh, but with Ellie, I, I just think it's that's kind of her season. She got injured. She came back. She was really lacking in confidence, although you'd never know it if you spoke to her. Um. And I just think next season is going to be her season, but something needs to change with her. And I'm not sure she recognises that, which is a shame because she can either go back up or she can go very much down. Mm. Um, Is that an obvious statement? (laughs) 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 There are any other way to go? Oh, she could go backwards. Definitely. Absolutely. (laughs) Um, reports today by Tom Gary in the Telegraph that Gareth Taylor is going to be offered a one-year extension. Kind of interesting when you consider the fact this is the first time since I think 2015 that City haven't had European football. <laughs> Emma is nodding her head <laughs> like she is very intrigued by this information. Yeah. I, I, it was strange for me. I was like, surely where City are at, that's unacceptable. Not to go about the league the way they did for so long and to not get Champions League football. And also with the way they've been knocked out of the Champions League the last two seasons to Real Madrid. I'm I'm, I'm a little bit baffled. And do you know what? It's one of these things, because I actually think they were playing the best football in the league. The way he had them playing, I was like, okay, now I get it. I get what all that change was and all that time he needed. Now we, I get it. But the reason why I would reconsider that extension is because why do you bring players in and don't play them why and then don't play them for weeks and weeks and then put them in in like a really a, you know a game that you have to win like Leilu Habi for example he brought her in left back from Barca she's going to play you, you sign a player from from Barca the reason why you sign them is to bring them in and play then he's playing Alessandri 
Laya Alexandri, left back. She's never played left back in her career. She's a centre back or a holding midfielder. He played her left back instead of Layla. And then when Laya gets injured, he's he's putting uh, Esme Morgan in there. Like it's like as if the player he bought to play has become fifth choice. Now I don't understand that. Not because of the player, but because of your thinking. Why do you bring a player like that in if you're not going to play them? And then after ruining someone's confidence and and getting them really annoyed with you because <laughs> they're sitting on the bench, then you put them in in like one of the most important games. It's like I don't get it. I'd like to know the reason for that. That's not about Garrett's skill or his potential to be a great manager. It's about the decision making. And also not being able to change the game in the moment. That as a manager, you need to be able to do. Yeah. Well, again. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I kind of just said about the one year contract extension. Oh, yeah. you, <laughs> you took it away, Abby. You took it away. Well, no, I thought it was interesting because when I saw it on Twitter first, Tom Gary tweeted out the story and like the quote tweets were way above everything else. And it wasn't even city supporters being like, oh no, or woohoo, this is great news. It was like Arsenal, Chelsea and United supporters being like, this is great. Like keep him <laughs> on for as long as you can because there's that feeling in the league that if he is head of City, they're not going to reach their potential. Now, apparently the discussions happened ahead of the game at the weekend and have been going on for quite a while. And um, he said after the game that he really did want to stay involved in City and it is just going to be a one year extension, but with the feeling that if it goes well next year, he could actually stay on for longer. Um, it says here that there is hope that in City, with a full preseason under his belt without such early qualifiers, a strong start could be made domestically to mount a serious challenge for a first WSL title. It's going to be a World Cup. I can't even listen to a, a full seat, a full, pre- it's just like this has been for three years now. Come on, like, just say that you want to keep him on because you want to end the story because it's for no other reason. The whole season was about getting to Champions League. That's how he was going to keep his job. And now they haven't made it. I think he saved himself because they were playing so well. And if they had more time, they definitely, I think they would have made it. But that's not the point. The point is, there's not, they're not in Champions League. They're not going to sign big, big players because of Champions League. And I think they're actually going to lose some players. So. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, there'll be girls on that squad that don't want to wait to play Champions League. They may be looking for the exit door. Well, especially, like, you know, you listen to any player that plays in those top clubs and the first thing they say that they want is they want to be competitive in a top league and they want to play Champions League. So... If you're not offering sides that, and that's probably what has benefited City massively in the last couple of seasons, because they haven't really been the competitive side that we've seen them in the past in the same way. They've had the ability, but they just haven't been able to follow through on it at all. Um, and they're they're an absolutely great club. It's a great great club to be a part of. So that's a massive draw. That is, if that was a Aston Villa or no disrespect to them, like a, a club that didn't have the top top class facilities the top of everything uh, I think they'd be in big big trouble but mm. it's the club itself that has the players there that would attract players um I see Magda Eriksson makes it into your list Emma obviously scoring in her final game at home for Chelsea very emotional statement from her Less emotion from Pernilla boys well she hasn't been there as long <laughs> or captain the side as well and I'm sure she is actually sad about leaving the club but uh, was it Ericsson's overall performance or was it the kind of big moment of the day that impressed you? A bit of both, I think. I think recently she's really stepped up as well and the absence of Millie Brighton probably really helped Chelsea with the title push as well. Her and Mielda, to be honest, they've both been quite good. Um, Yeah, but yeah, she had her moment. I don't think not everybody kind of gets to say their goodbye like that. So uh, it's nice for her. Yeah, yeah I, I have to say there was a little tear in my eye when I was listening to her speech. I was like, "Oh, goodbye." <laughs> um, yeah, she she deserves to be in there. I think she's been. I, I I don't think it's been a great season for her, but I think she's been a great player for Chelsea. And um and yeah, it's just it's kind of sad because it just seems like she shouldn't be leaving. It doesn't feel right that they're leaving, to be quite honest. Um, but. As I said last week, Emma Hayes has already got the players 
lined up to replace them. Yeah, I loved Emma Hayes talking about her transfer strategy for the summer. And she's like, yeah, it's all done. <laughs> she's like, someone might come along, you never know. But for now, I'm happy. And I was like, oh, to be as prepared in my life as Emma <laughs> Hayes is in her transfer strategy, that would be very good. Um, well, Emma, thank you very much for doing another Team of the Week. And we will get a final Team of the Week slash maybe year out of you next week. Uh, so we can round it all off with a bow. But coming up next, we have an uh, interview with Manchester United's Ona Bazier. Enjoy. I am delighted to say that we were joined tonight by one of the top players in the Women's Super League and someone who has been garnering attention from across the women's football world with her performances this year and alone. Ona Bagier has been lighting up the league this year and even been nominated for WSL Player of the Year. Not only has she helped contribute to Manchester United's epic defence, which has conceded just 12 goals in 21 games, she's also recorded 15 assists across all competitions. Ona, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you doing? Very good. Really happy to be here with you all together. It was a, a pretty epic match you guys had against Manchester City, which, as we were chatting about just before we started recording, ended in the most incredible of fashions with Lucia Garcia's goal. Hmm. How? What was the reaction like in the in the staff afterwards? It was amazing and I was so happy as well for her. But I think, as I said, I think uh, we've been, we had these feelings during this season. So it's always nice. And we we have this feeling as a team that we want to fight till the last minute. So I think that's very, very good for the team. And that means uh, that shows who we are. Yeah, yeah. And I think you've been doing that a few times. You've, you've yeah. done that a few times, Arna, haven't you? you? You never say never, you never say die, you just keep going. And then yeah. it's all it's usually Lucia though, isn't it, who comes on? <laughs> yes, and I think she as she is, like she's quick, she's fast, she's a strong thing uh, for her. Like it's as well at the perfect moment as well. Sometimes when the the game is like broken. And then she can, uh, yeah, she can be, she can be really good, and she can hurt the opponent. Yeah, a lot of people mentioned last season that maybe you didn't have the depth to compete, and now we've seen your subs coming on and make a massive impact. Have you felt that as a group that any player can play at any time, and you can still win any game? Yes, I feel like the same as she is being like the soup that she's changing the game. She can be as well uh, starting. I think we have a couple of like we have a lot of players that they are really good that they could as well be starting. But for the reason I think like that competition uh, within the team it's really good and I think we are more yeah we are more mm, I don't know how to say but a bit of that training I guess so yeah it's the standard everywhere yeah. More strength and depth, I think, in general. Mark Mark has got definitely got more options than he did last season, which is a massive thing. Which you need. Because when it comes to this time of the season, especially it's just been the most incredible finish. Like it's just been a, a brilliant season, but the finish has been brilliant. If you didn't have that strength and depth, a big squad, I I don't think you would have won some of those little scrappy games that you won. Yeah, because they're really like a lot of games we've just uh, won the games just at the at the end of the game so I think that soups as well sometimes help a lot what was like the conversation between the team between like say the FA Cup final and then having such a big game against City where there was so much on the line for you guys well to be honest we just we just we were thinking about the game by game like the week of the final we were thinking about the final we didn't even think about man city but then after the final we we were as well thinking about well now it's done we now gonna go and beat man city and i think that's as well a really good mentality to be day by day and i think we did pretty good about that manchester is red <laughs> if you had a choice 
of winning the FA Cup or winning the league, what would it what would it be? Or what would it have been? I should say it in the past. Really. <laughs> what would it be? FA Cup or League? I mean, I think I would say the league, even though the FA Cup is really special because it's played in Wembley with such a crazy like um like amount of people feel to be able to live that experience it was amazing what Wembley did you do or when camp you... new, <laughs> <laughs> camp new. <laughs> i mean i haven't been to come now so i don't know how is it that good answer yeah let's look at that one <laughs> What was like running through your head when you were walking out on the pitch at Wembley and you could hear that like sellout crowd cheering? And obviously it's such a momentous occasion for the club anyways, never mind the amazing atmosphere that there was. Yes, but I just I just enjoyed it to be honest. It was so nice. It was I feel uh, uh in myself, in my opinion, like I like and I love this kind of the moments, this kind of games, like with those crowds and that pressure. I just love it. So I really wanted to enjoy every second. I certainly did. But well, it looked like a, a good match on the pitch, even if the results didn't exactly go the way. You know, there was proper bite and fight to it between the two sides. How close do you think yourself and the squad feel you are to competing like as in this year you're so close there's still a chance it's a little slim but there's still a chance United can do it this year how close do you think the squad is to taking that extra step and maybe dominating Chelsea a little bit more throughout the season and getting that final first place I mean I feel this season we've showed that we are not that uh, that behind we we are there and we fight for everything and we still like fighting for the the league so I think there is no much distance but of course like teams like Chelsea like any second any detail they take the advance so just little details but that's part of the elite so I think but yes I think that there is no distance and you are English is so good, and I'm so proud. Yeah, I feel like yeah, it was like, who's your teacher? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm actually not. Her teacher. No, I know. I got, that's what I'm saying. I wouldn't go to you for for teaching. <laughs> I I would say that Emma is the best to to teach. Oh, oh. <laughs> see, we we did one class and she never came back. So that was <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> <laughs> and so with. The, the qualification for Champions League, making an FA Cup final, bringing the title race to the final day. Where does that rank in what the team said they wanted to do at the start of the season? Well, as I said, we just wanted to be like com competing for everything. We just we want to win titles. We want to be like one of the top teams in, in this league. And I think we've showed that we are there and but yeah we we didn't even think about like an object we would just wanted to be the best possible and just yeah week by week win everything so we we wanted to win everything we wanted to yeah fight for everything and how important is champions league football for the club i think it's the most uh, most important thing because it's I think we, as a team, we as a club, we deserve uh, since, for, as le at least for since the moment that I I arrived. I think every year we've been fighting to to be there. We always ended like in like we were always so close, but there is always something that we've missed. So I think it's really important for the club and for the team. We've never doubted you, never, not once through the season. <laughs> I've always said United were getting in the Champions League. Always, always. Never once. Yeah, you totally haven't been to a bad city all season. 
Well, I guess in this league it's as well, especially it's really, really difficult to get Champions League because you're fighting against three other teams that they are as well really good and they have players that are as well like Champions League level. So it's always been really hard to get it. I think it's the first year ever that those three spots have been contested so much. It's usually, you you know, you can usually put money on the top three. And even if a new team came in, like when City first came into the league, they they did really well. But it was never in any doubt. It was always the three at the top the whole way through the season. This is the first time I remember it being so close and going right to the end of the season. Yes, and I feel like even, like even till this weekend, we didn't even know who was going to be in, in those three positions, three first positions. And... Till the, the till the last moment, we don't gonna know who's gonna win the league, which I think correct. Yeah, That's right. It's gonna go to the. It is. It is. It is the last game, which is brilliant. The last That's game. If any team was going to pull it off, the team that has got like the last minute goal in the most crucial of games against like City, Arsenal, <laughs> United are gonna be the ones who magically turn it around on the final day to win the league. I mean, what a story that would be. Oh, it would be amazing. It would be lovely to us. I mean, it's how Chelsea did it last season, so it's not as if it, it it can't be done. It would be great though if you were playing against them. Like, how good would that game have wow. been? Wow, <laughs> that, that would have been amazing. Been, my anxiety levels would have been like. <laughs> I think yeah. everyone watching that game, whether you were neutral or like a supporter of either side, would be watching it kind of like this, not knowing what was going to happen next. <laughs> crazy, crazy. And you have the most assists of any defender in the league. And sometimes we talk about it on the podcast saying that United should use you more. Do you ever get frustrated with the style of play you play? Or do you feel like you fit into Mark Skinner's plans and it, it gets the most out of you? I mean, I feel like we we don't really have just one way to play. So I think we've tried to use as many possible um, solutions or just uh, yeah different ways to win the game or just try to win the game um, but I really I think I really stood on on the the style and the, the how we want to play uh, and I think this year for example it's yeah it's been shown that um, well I've I've been able to go more forward and I could as well assist and uh, and be there yeah, for the team. Is there anyone on the team in particular that you enjoy linking up with and why do you enjoy linking up with them in that way? I mean, I really like, uh, for example, to play with, with Alessia Russo. Uh, we always we are always like training together, just, I don't know, like crossing and just, she wants always to finish. I was just always want to cross. So I think we've, uh, yeah, we have a good connection, but as well, for example, with Lucia, which I think we have kind of similar style, like quick, uh, super explosive. So when we are together in the wing, we really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, I'll not forget the, the first game. It was against Reading, right? You were home. Yeah, you came. Yeah. I came to watch, of course, to support my Spanish girls. Um, and that was like, that, that game, I was like, oh my God, teams are watching these two players down the right-hand side and they're not going to be able to stop them. There's no way. Because you just like, that was it. You set the standards from minute one. Um. No, it's been really good to watch. It's been good to watch United. You have been the underdogs. Like you wouldn't, not that you wouldn't have been expected to get into the top three, but it's always Chelsea, Arsenal, City, right? And then, of course, beating City in that last game was must have been like the cherry on the top. That was just like the best thing to leave the league at three points at City as well. And um, was there any, did you feel any difference in that game than the previous game you played against them? Did you feel more confident going into the game? Yeah, I felt like the team just knew what we, what we want to do, what we wanted to do, what we, and I felt since the first minute we were, uh, like the first half we played, it was amazing. We were on top of them. 
uh, that's true. You pressed higher, right? You pressed higher in midfield yeah. or on it, yeah. Yes, and I think, yeah, it was it was really enjoyable. Yeah, I think you're going to... Fans think as well, it was yeah. very enjoyable for the fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this especially is the Champions been... League comes into it, though. It's really important for United. It's, it's a great way to attract players from abroad as well. Yes. Yeah, because players actually look for that. They look to see who's in the Champions League and then they'll make decisions on that. So it's a massive thing. Yeah, and like even looking at the support, like last home game of the season, like the United support has been growing massively throughout the season. So people are going to start looking at United as a big club now that they're in the Champions League. Please tell me you're looking for a different home ground though. Trying to get to that stadium. It's like <laughs> it's so complicated. Metro in Rome. <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> No, I think we're gonna we're gonna keep there. I think as well, like um, we've made it like home, and we would love to start playing more uh, at Old Trafford, to be honest. <laughs> but maybe yeah. that's more in the future. But uh, yeah, I feel I feel that the crowd, yes, has increased a lot, and I think we have. Uh, I don't know if it's the most. Um, fans that are coming to watch us which is incredible and I think we really feel them when we're there I think something ridiculous like the nine top attendances at Lee Village were all broken this year at various different games and you have to if you look at say what Arsenal are doing in terms of having Champions League games at the Emirates and hosting like those big women's weekend of football games at the Emirates you'd have to think that United as a club are looking at that now and saying well if Arsenal can do it. Why aren't we trying to fill out Old Trafford? If Arsenal can get sixty thousand, why can't we get similar sort of numbers? So hopefully there are more games at Old Trafford because yeah. I imagine it's a pretty amazing place to play. I mean, Old Trafford is incredible, and just like when I came to Man United, I didn't even know how big it was since I was there, and how like is the like the unit with the fans like that link with the fans are really really special and i think yeah to bring that to the woman and just i just imagine like one man united woman's game at old trafford like full it would be a dream like it would be amazing to watch to see yeah you do know half the fans that go are probably irish though like there's a massive they all get on the boat the trains you can't get a plane if united are playing at home you cannot get a flight from manchester to dublin like they're they the, the seats are just booked up it's just crazy you can nearly walk to old trafford as well it'd be so handy <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, old trafford that would be pretty insane have more events there what's Mark Skinner like to work as a coach with he's he's good he likes to to push the players he likes to like to work like really on the details I think for the reason as well this year we've been I think really good at defending we're really good at attacking um we've tried to be as perfect as possible to try to, to win everything and to have clean sheets. I think everything is really important on this competition. I think it's one of the most uh, competitive leagues. Yeah, he seems to have come in and I suppose taken up the mantle and the growth that Casey Stoney started and developed it quite well and taken control of it a little bit more. As a team, when say you're discussing something like next season, what's the what's the main thing that's on people? Like, is it winning the league? Is it winning the FA Cup? Or is it kind of similar to what you were saying about this season of you know being competitive and being up there constantly? I think it's the same mentality. I think it's more important as well uh, to be able to go through the champions, like not just go to the first round. Sort of try to go through. And but uh, in England, like just as we did this year, like at least do the same as we did we've done this year, and yeah, just try as well to to win titles and compete for everything. And in terms of 
having played obviously in Spain and starting out at Barcelona, the academy there and moving to different teams, what have you found is kind of like the main difference between the two leagues and the two setups? I think the most like the the most uh, different like the how would you say it? like well the biggest the biggest the biggest, yeah, the biggest difference in Thank Spanish you. you can speak Spanish I'll translate don't worry. <laughs> the biggest difference is uh, this league is more uh, physical like yeah and I think it's more direct as well uh, in Spain we just like they just try to uh, play they try to everyone like every team tries to play more from from the back from the keepers and I think as well it's not as direct as this league is yeah yeah definitely that, there's a massive difference like that's why you're probably the best uh, fullback in the world oh and I'm gonna say it you're probably the best fullback in the world because you've learned from playing you want to play you probably played forward you probably played midfield you probably not in goal I hate when outfield pl players play in goal but every other position that's why you're so good at it and that's the difference the Spanish defenders can run with the ball they can move with the ball you can see it in Pep Guardiola's coaching he wants his defenders to move into midfield I mean he was able to get John Stones playing football so I was thinking about John Stones <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Um, but yeah there's a massive difference plus what i feel is really different I could go and watch um a kids game in England and the manager is screaming and shouting at the players the parents are screaming and shouting at the players pass it do this do this there's none of that in Spain they watch they let the kids do whatever they want <laughs> whenever they want and yes they'll give them advice but there's no like constant coaching it's it's freedom in play it's really nice actually to, to go and watch and not hear parents go mental on the sideline um but yeah, <laughs> that's my <laughs> thing I'm a never one for going yeah, mental on the sideline on the sideline yeah. I go mental I go mental on the pitch <laughs> <laughs> but you know when there's just loads of noise it's really difficult for the kids to enjoy it you know they're nearly afraid to get on the ball um but yeah big difference I think with Spain and England mm. Oh, no, I feel like we've asked you all the smart and intelligent footballing questions, but we have to leave you on, on the best question of all, which is, what are your thoughts about Emma Byrne, the player, the person, <laughs> the, the one who got you here no, today? No, 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 no. <laughs> I need to answer that, Ona. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a chat next month. All right? <laughs> I, need to, I need to prepare her for to answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> ask me if you want. I'll give you an answer. <laughs> I'd be worried that we'd lose our PG rating if I <laughs> <laughs> uh, Well, Ona, it was absolutely lovely to have you on. Thank you so much for giving us your time and best of luck with the rest of the season. Uh, we will all be watching. Very, very interested to see what happens. Pokemon okay. Reading. Thank you so much for being me. Um, that's all for us this week, but we will be back next week doing a whopper review of the entire season and of course those final few matches that we were just talking to Ono about there thank you all for listening and we will see you again next Tuesday The Koi Gig Pod on OTB in association with Cadbury official snack partner of the Republic of Ireland women's national team